So in this episode, I'm going to show you the advanced panel. So Blackmagic announced a new set of buttons for the panel, which is basically going to give this a new lease of life. These panels are 10 years old now. I've had this one about eight years. So you can imagine that was kind of version seven, version eight of the software. So they didn't even have the edit page, for example, back then. So a lot of the buttons that are on here or that were on the old panel have become redundant over time. So the easiest fix for them was to send out a whole new bag of buttons and you basically will get 241 new buttons. So there's 167 hard buttons here and you've got, I've got the figures written down here. So you've got 44 of these knobs and you've also got 30 soft buttons. So there's no shortcut to updating this. You've physically got to replace all these buttons. And I'm not gonna lie, it took me about four or five hours to do it. So make sure you've got a good supply of coffee and you basically grab the tool that they send you and it's really easy to do. The first few um, took me a little bit of time, but once you do it, it's really, it's actually quite therapeutic. Basically, all you've got to do is put this around the button and you literally just pull firmly up and then take your replacement button and drop it in. Just to give you a quick tour for those who haven't seen the panel before, this is this is sturdy stuff. I mean, that is, that is heavy, that. These are really good, heavy duty panels. USB at the back, so that just connects straight to your computer. And uh, there's a power cable, and then there's a couple of spare USB sockets. So I've got my Resolve dongle just straight in the back of the panel. So there's basically three panels. I'm gonna walk you through, I'm not gonna show you every single button, but I'm gonna give you a good tour and so you can see how the new panel works. So if you haven't replaced the buttons, you've got two options in Resolve. So in Resolve 17, if I go to my preferences, go to Control Panel, and in here, you've got the choice of DaVinci Resolve Advanced Panel or DaVinci Resolve Advanced Panel 2. So obviously, depending on which button set you're working with will depend which mode Resolve works in. So what's quite good is you can still work with the old buttons and they still do their job. Install the new buttons and just switch it in the panel. So I'm gonna switch it to Advanced Panel 2. And the other thing that I do as a personal preference, if I go to my user settings, and go to control panels. And in here you can change the sensitivity of all the rings and everything like that. And you can also change the LCDs. So I set mine actually not to be red, which is the default. But I actually put mine to be blue. So I've got a blue panel set now, which looks a little bit nicer in the grading suite. It's a little bit easier on the eye, in my opinion. So we've got three panels here, and I'm gonna start on the main central one and show you the changes that have happened. We've got our four trackballs and rings. So this is lift, gamma, gain, and offset, although it now has HDR functionality as well, so that's not strictly true. You've got these six buttons either side. So this is luminance, lift, gamma, gain. This is saturation, this is hue, and this is luminance mix. And I've done an episode on luminance mix, which you can check out if you don't know how to use that button. And you've got all these soft buttons at the top. So these change as I go into different modes. Now the beauty of the new button set on the center console is these buttons at the top of each ring used to just reset, that's all they did was reset. Now they've got reset on the top shift. So you've got this shift up, gives you that row, shift down, gives you the bottom row, and no shift at all, gives you the main item on each button. But I've now got raw settings, log settings, primary settings, I've got HDR settings, so I can go into high dynamic range, and the center console, the soft buttons, are now reacting to the button I've pressed. So if I press HDR, I've got HDR control, and I can go through all my different dynamic range zones, and each of the rings is then updating. So you can see that on the software, we've got shadow, light, and highlight, and I can go down the different zones, and then I've got black, dark, and shadow. So really effective way, I've not even touched the software yet. Uh, we've got qualifiers on here, the windows, you've got all sorts of stuff. So your main functionality is easy to access from there. And then I can shift down and access things like if I want my blurring tools, they're here. It's all just one or two touch of a button. Really great. Now on the left and right panels, these soft controls can be customized. This is brand new on version 17. So how to do that? This is currently set to curves and I don't really use curves as these kind of controls. So I'm gonna set that to be something else. Now you can only assign it to be any of these 12 items. If I press shift up, it shows you the ones that are available. And if I press shift down, it shows you the other ones that are available. So I'm gonna press shift up and then I press this key here to represent this panel and then just assign. So I'm gonna assign that to be sizing. And you can see that updates straight away. And I want it to be input and reference sizing. So this is now a toggle between all of those things. And that panel will stay permanently there for the whole duration of the grade. So it's really useful to have that. 
on the left panel, I'm going to set mine to be the tracker. Now the tracker is a lower shift function. So instead of pressing upper shift, I press lower shift. Each panel, by the way, has a set of shift buttons. So you've got shift, shift, and shift. So I press shift lower, press this mode selector or whatever it's called, and then I'm going to hit tracker. And that is now permanently assigned to the tracker. So it's really good when I'm on, I, I do tracking a lot and you literally just press the button there and you, you're good to go. So this one changes interactively. These two are fixed all the time, doesn't matter what mode I'm in. If I'm in HDR mode, this will still be sizing. So let's have a look at the new functionality on the right hand panel. Now what we've got here is our basic transport controls. So I can go to the next clip or the previous clip, first frame, last frame. I can go into my nodes here quite easily and obviously stop and play. You've got a jog shuttle wheel here. This side, this is for doing dynamic keyframing. So again, it's just one touch to start dynamic keyframing, really useful. And then here you've got your numeric keypad. So this is really easy for navigating to shots. So if I wanna to go to shot four, just press four, enter, and I'm there. I can type in a time code. I can copy grades from another shot. So I can say grade three, copy onto grade four. And that's done like that. This button here will copy the previous grade. This button here copies previous grade, but one. Uh, but the other nice thing with the numeric keypad is you can do printer lights. So if I press printer lights here, this now puts the numeric keypad into printer light mode. So for example, here, I'm gonna add magenta and this one will reduce magenta. However, if you go on the printer light button, shift up is half points and shift down is quarter point. So if I want to increment in quarter points, shift down, P light, and there you go. So I'm moving in quarter point increments. Once you finish with your printer lights, switch the button off, it goes back to normal numeric mode. You've also got here, if I press play on here, I can press flag and you'll see that the center console now comes up with all the different color flags that you can have. So you've got a whole toggle through there. So I can say, I want a green flag at that point there, carry on playing. So this is your main memory area. So I can really easily just assign this grade to letter A. So I'll just say current, a, and that is now locked in there. So now every time I want to use that, I just press the button A, really quick and easy. But not only have you got A, we've got eight buttons here, and you've got a shift up and a shift down. So you've actually got all the way up to the letter X on here. Now on the previous button panel set, you had these eight memories duplicated on this panel. And they've taken off that duplication, which gives us eight brand new functions with shift up and shift down. So I've got 24 new functions just because they replaced those buttons. So you can imagine how with over 167 buttons, how much more functionality we've really got. Remember the advanced panel is about pressing one button to do a job instead of going through lots of menus. The more buttons you've got, the more one touch access I've got to all the functionality of Resolve. I've got really used to the old panel buttons and I'm now having to really relearn everything, but it is gonna be well worth it. And obviously there's a lot more to learn because I've got a lot more shift up and shift down functionality. So onto the left-hand panel, and you've got this T-bar straight away, which is working with the image wipes. So if I press my reference on, whichever still I'm on in my gallery appears as a wipe. So I can use this to toggle through the wipe. And this is where the soft settings that are programmed in here come into handy because the image that I'm looking at is on the wrong side. Now I could flip that with one button. However, I can just go to here and find my reference wipe and literally pan the shot through. So again, I've got really quick flexibility way of, of getting the reference shot that I want to work to in vision. Okay, once I'm finished with that, just reset. Any of these buttons here can be reset just by pressing them. And also in here, I can go to my split screen. It's currently set to versions, but if I change that to be playheads, which is a new function 17 that I'm loving, and I can access the different playheads using the right-hand panel. So if you just press shift down and go to playhead, I can choose B, or A, and we come out of split screen mode and press play. So you can see how really easy and flexible it is to work with like that. Moving over to here, this is all your nodes. So this is where I can add serials, parallels. So I'm gonna add a node and a circle. And the nice thing with this is straight away, my center soft buttons have gone into window mode because it's expecting me to change the window. So they have changed the layout of this a little bit. So my muscle memory is not quite as good as it was. And if you come down here and press adjust window, your ball can position that window and you can use the ring to actually rotate. So using this button here, you can go pre-clip and post-clip in groups. So that's really useful. So down here, we've got our versions. So if I wanna try out different looks, I can maybe keep the first look, add a version, and I'm good to go straight away. I don't have to right-click in the software or do any of that. It's just one button, do my grade, 
and then I've got previous version or next version. I can have a look through them really quickly. So moving up to these buttons here, I've got my tracking and I've got stabilize. I can disable my effects. I can bypass fusion. It's that sort of stuff. Remember this used to be the duplicate of those memories. So it's really great having these on the panel. This side, I've got a little bit of stuff even for Fairlight in here. So we can actually go, we can use mute and copy and paste. So we can copy and paste our grades here. The top left bank, this 10 up here are great. These give you access to every single page. So I can go straight to the deliver page, for example. And let's go back to the color page. And I've also got the ability to open up the scopes. So I want to see the scopes nice and large. One button, press for that or I can go to scopes mode here and actually cycle through all the different scopes. So for example, here I'm on the waveform and if I shift down and change scale, I flick between video data level and full data level. I can go to the effects here. And when I press the effects, basically the center console gives me an option of some of the open effects, things like film grain, face refine, match move, color compressor, glow. So if I press glow, for example, and I get all the options that are available in the glow open effects. So you've got really, far better way of controlling that glow using these soft buttons than you have in the actual software itself. So it's a really quick, easy, but accurate way of working. And finally on here, we've got Lightbox. I love Lightbox. So one touch button, we're there. And I can feed that out to my monitor. So once you have installed the buttons, it's like having a brand new panel. So much more functionality. I've got a little bit of relearning to do, but I'll get there. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the advanced panel. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, over here, this is really important. You've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and then... Uh, over here, you've got your memories, A to X. <laughs> a, B, C, D, D, N, M, P, O, Q. So let me show you. If I press reference on, of all the stills. So in here we've got our scopes. I can cycle through... Oh, I didn't know you could do that. So you get the idea, it's quick, it's simple, it's, it's expensive. <laughs> What's quite nice on here actually is I can mute. So I've got one button that I can just literally mute the audio. Um, so that's quite useful if the phone rings. <laughs> it's a lot easier than pressing stop, I'll tell you. <laughs>